we have seen that when we write a formula like n equals big O of n square, what we actually mean by this is that n belongs to the set denoted by this notation big O of n square. So big O of n square is really a set of functions that grows, uh, it's, it's a set of functions where each function grows either at the same rate as n square or at a rate smaller than n square. So this is how we interpret formulas where the big O notation or some other asymptotic notation makes a standalone appearance on the right hand side. But how do we interpret equations or inequalities in which the asymptotic notation is one of several terms on the left hand side or on the right hand side of the equation or inequality? Here's an example of that. 2n square plus 3n plus 1 equals 2n square plus theta of n. This is an example where theta of n is one of the two terms appearing on the right hand side of this equation. So the way to interpret this equation is 2n square plus 3n plus 1 is equal to 2n square plus some function in this set theta of n. So this is a set of functions. Theta of n is a set of functions. And so uh, what we are trying to do in this equation is we are trying to replace 3n plus 1 by theta of n. Perhaps because we are not concerned about the exact form of the lower order terms, we are just concerned about the fact that the lower order terms here grow at the rate of theta of n. So when the asymptotic notation appears as one of the terms on the right hand side, the notation stands for some anonymous function in that set. Right? Some anonymous function which we are not caring to specify in all its details with the, with the constants and all. We are just specifying here that it's some function in this set. So 2n squared plus 3n plus 1 is 2n squared plus some anonymous function f of n. In this case f of n is of course equal to 3n plus 1. But we are just hiding the fact, uh, uh, we are hiding the exact form of f of n. We are just saying that it's some function in theta of n. So we can rewrite this equation as 2n square plus 3n plus 1 is 2n square plus f of n for some f of n in, in the set theta of n. Here's an example where the asymptotic notation is used as a term on the left hand side and also on the right hand side. So 2n square plus big theta of n is big theta of n square. So how do we interpret this equation when these two terms really stand for sets of functions? Well, the way to read this equation is if I take 2n square and add to it any function from this set theta of n, I'm going to get, the result will be a function uh, that is going to belong to this set big theta of n squared. Right? So if I take 2n squared and I add to 2n squared any function from this set big theta of n, I'm going to end up with a resulting function that belongs to the set big theta of n square. For example, I could take 2n square and add to it the function say 3n plus 1 which is which is a function in big theta of n and the resulting function 2n square plus 3n plus 1 is going to be a function that is in the set big theta of n square. Right? So this is this is some function in big theta of n square. And if, if I had chosen some other function from this set, instead of 3n plus 1, if I had chosen, say, uh, 100n plus 5, then I would have got 2n squared plus 100n plus 5, which also is a function in big theta of n squared. 
So I can pick any function from this set and the result will be some function in this set. So no matter what function f of n we pick from big theta of n, 2n square plus f, f of n, 2n square plus that function is going to be some function in big theta of n square. This is how we read uh, the theta notation when it appears as one of the terms in an equation or in an inequality.